So this year we saw more Republicans at the DNC than we've ever seen before. That's not something that normally happens at conventions, but it's happening now because people realize that this argument we're having about Donald Trump has nothing to do with Republican versus Democrat and has everything to do with preserving American democracy. I was thrilled when Adam Kinzinger took the stage. Uh, he was one of my favorite highlights from the week because I can't count the times that I've been in arguments with people over the years. And there was a time period where I could feel this shift happening and I could feel the other side getting more extreme. It started before Trump, and I think Trump definitely capitalized on that. But there came this moment in time where that if you didn't agree with every war that the Republican Party wanted to fight, or you didn't agree with everything the Republican president said, then you were labeled unpatriotic, and they would go so far as to say you hate your country. Well, once Donald Trump got a hold of that mantle, he took it to a new level of extreme, and pretty soon we weren't allowed to say anything that we weren't just called you know, unpatriotic, communist, socialist, sadist, pedophiles. I mean, they just completely unleashed uh, all of their anger and rage toward us. So when Adam got up to speak and he talked about how that, you know what, Democrats are patriotic too, that sure meant a lot to me. Take a look at this clip. I was just a kid when I re was drawn to the ro party of Ronald Reagan to his vision of a strong America, the shining city on a hill. I was a Republican for 12 years in Congress, and I still hold on to the label. I never thought I'd be here, but listen, you never thought you'd see me here, did you? <laughs> but <laughs> I've learned something about the Democratic Party, and I want to let my fellow Republicans in on the secret. The Democrats are as patriotic as us. They love this country just as much as we do. And they... And they are as eager to defend American values at home and abroad as we conservatives have ever been. I said during the watch along that we did on the channel that I thanked Adam for saying that and I would like to thank him one more time for saying that because for far too long we have been labeled as unpatriotic. The truth is we love our country just as much as anybody. We may not agree with you on every single issue and maybe we want to see things put in place that you may disagree with, but we don't want to take away your right to disagree with us. I think that's one of the biggest differences. Uh, we may disagree with you. And here's the thing, if Adam Kinzinger later on decides to run for president against Kamala one day, uh, I probably would vote against Adam because I don't agree with him on a whole lot of policies. I'm sure he wouldn't agree with us either, but it's about democracy. It's got nothing to do with the labels that we've put on ourselves. And I applaud Adam for realizing that the Republican Party is no longer conservative. Take a look at what he says here. I've learned something about my party too something I couldn't ignore. The Republican Party is no longer conservative. It has switched its allegiance from the principles that gave it purpose to a man whose only purpose is himself. <laughs> Donald Trump is a weak man pretending to be strong. He is a small man pretending to be big. He's a faithless man pretending to be righteous. He's a perpetrator who can't stop playing the victim. That was one of my favorite parts of Adam's speech because I can't count the times over the years that I've thought back to friends and arguments that we used to have about politics friends that I thought were conservative, and suddenly I seen them getting behind a dude that wasn't conservative at all, getting behind a weak dude and thinking he was strong, getting behind a faithless dude and thinking that he represented their religion. It truly baffled me as I sat back and watched them change lanes, and I felt myself going, wait a minute, that's not Republican. That's not conservative. Where are you guys going? You're, you're jumping the shark here. It was like suddenly I was in this weird place where suddenly I was defending the Republicans because I was going, wait, now that's not the argument that I thought we were having. 
And I would ask myself so many times, does none of these Republicans see what's happening? That's why it was so good to see that Adam saw through it. And I applaud him for seeing through it. And I really applaud him for what he has to say here next. He puts on quite a show, but there is no real strength there. As a conservative and a veteran, I believe true strength lies in defending the vulnerable. It's in protecting your family. It's in standing up for our Constitution and our democracy. That, that is the soul of being a conservative. It used to be the soul of being a Republican. But Donald Trump has suffocated the soul of the Republican Party. His fundamental weakness has coursed through my party like an illness, sapping our strength, softening our spine, whipping us into a fever that has untethered us from our values. Our democracy was frayed by the events of January 6th, as Donald Trump's deceit and dishonor led to a siege on the United States Capitol. That day, I stood witness to a profound sorrow, the desecration of our sacred tradition of peaceful transition of power, tarnished by a man too fragile, too vain, and too weak to accept defeat. All I can say is that I'm truly glad that Adam saw through it, and I'm glad there are Republicans out there who are seeing through it and more and more starting to speak up and speak out. And we saw them all week long at the convention. I hope more of my friends that watches my videos from time to time and are, is confused about things, like why is Brando suddenly just coming down so hard on our head? It's not because you're a Republican at all. That's never why I was arguing with you. We might have had a difference of opinion on things, but this has gone beyond the realm of a debate or a difference of opinion. When you're saying to me that you're cool with a dictator, when you're saying to me that you don't really believe in democracy, then how can you look at me and say that you're ready to have a debate with me? How can you say, I want to have a debate with you, but I don't believe in American democracy. And I believe we should be real, ruled by this one dude who believes exactly like me. But yeah, I'd love to debate you sometime, Brando. Well, what are we going to debate about if you won't give me the fundamental human right of a democracy. If you're taking that away, then you can't sit here and challenge me to debates. It makes no sense to me. So when I get those messages, just know that I'm rolling my eyes because as long as you're going along with what Donald Trump is saying, you're telling me that you're not conservative. You're telling me that you're not a Republican. And you're really telling me that you never believed in any of the things you were saying. You were just looking for someone to come along and give you permission to be an asshole. So I'm glad that Adam saw through it. I hope more people do. And I applaud him. That took a lot of courage. It took a lot of balls to stand up there and do that. And the day may come that Adam may be running for an office and I may vote against him because we disagree on policies. But we will never disagree on democracy. The day that you disagree with me on democracy is the day you can show yourself the door.